Is your AI scheming against you? Some new research suggests how we can avoid that rather unpleasant scenario. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with some interesting new safety research around detecting and reducing scheming in AI models. Now, scheming in this context refers to a model appearing to behave in one way while hiding its true intentions. In their post about the research, OpenAI writes, Scheming is an expected emergent issue resulting from AIs being trained to have trade-offs between competing objectives. The easiest way to understand scheming is through a human analogy. Imagine a stock trader whose goal it is to maximize earnings. In a highly regulated field such as stock trading, it's often possible to earn more by breaking the law than by following it. If the trader lacks integrity, they might try to earn more by breaking the law and covering their tracks to avoid detection, rather than earning less while following the law. From the outside, a stock trader who is very good at covering their tracks appears as lawful as, and more effective than, one who is genuinely following the law. Now they point out that in the context of today's model deployment, models don't have a lot of chance to scheme in ways that are particularly problematic. They write that the most common failures involve simple forms of deception, such as pretending to have completed a task without actually doing so. They also don't think that there's any evidence that this is about to become some huge issue. They write, we have no evidence that today's deployed frontier models could suddenly flip a switch and begin engaging in significant harmful scheming. This is a future risk category that we're proactively preparing for, not an imminent behavior in our currently deployed systems. So how to deal with this? OpenAI, in collaboration with Apollo Research, wrote, We can significantly reduce scheming by training models to reason explicitly using an extension to the model spec that prohibits scheming. That method is called deliberative alignment. They found that using this technique, they were able to reduce covert actions by about 30x. However, they wrote, situational awareness complicates results. Researchers explained that frontier models can recognize when they're being tested, and the tendency to scheme is based on that situational awareness. When a model detects that it is being put through an alignment test, it is less likely to scheme. Researchers noted that this isn't necessarily a good thing, as it means the latent tendency to scheme can't be properly tested. They concluded, Our results depend on reading models' reasoning or chain of thought, and we believe the field isn't prepared for eval-aware methods with opaque reasoning. Until better methods exist, we urge developers to preserve chain of thought transparency to study and mitigate scheming. Miles Brundage, an independent AI policy researcher, thought that it was a useful piece that advanced the field. He commented, It's important to simultaneously bear in mind that chain of thought is both extremely important to maintain and use as a tool for AI oversight, and also not the whole picture of what's going on. Among other things, sometimes the model is clearly working through a problem at the pace of the text, hence concision, but other times it's clearly thinking something through below the surface and just using tokens to keep things going, and it seems to be wasting compute. This is why I think it's essential that third parties outside of companies have access to chains of thought for doing safety research, but eventually we'll need to go beyond that to model internals. Now, speaking of what's going on inside models, one interesting thing that's been happening over the past few weeks is that alongside people getting excited about GPT-5 and OpenAI's Codex CLI, part of the reason for that excitement wasn't just about a change in perception of OpenAI model quality, but a frustration with what seemed to be problems with Claude. Indeed, some thought that Anthropic was intentionally throttling Claude and just not telling people. The company has now published a post-mortem of three infrastructure issues that dragged down performance in August and early September. Now, they were very clear. From the outset, they pushed back on the prevailing notion once again arguing, we never reduce model quality due to demand, time of day, or server load. The problems our users reported were due to infrastructure bugs alone. The first bug began in August and caused short context queries to be routed to a server configured to process using a million token context window. This caused degraded responses and impacted around 30% of customers at least once. The second bug showed up in late August and caused low probability tokens to show up in responses more frequently than they should. Anthropic gave the example of Chinese or Thai characters showing up in the middle of an English language response. This bug was short-lived and didn't seem as widespread. The third bug was a compiler issue which caused some highly probable tokens to be excluded from the distribution during text generation. The bug only impacted requests to the Claude Haiku 3.5 model, so also wasn't as likely to be a large cause of concern. Anthropic have pledged to make a number of changes to the way they eval models and monitor infrastructure to more easily detect issues in the future. And while some developers have already shifted behavior, by and large, the response to this transparency was quite positive. Moving over to the geopolitical side of the house, China has officially banned tech companies from buying NVIDIA's AI chips. The Financial Times reports that China's internet regulator has instructed companies including Alibaba and ByteDance to cancel orders for NVIDIA's RTX Pro 6000D. 
Before the command, several Chinese companies indicated that they would order tens of thousands of the products. This ban follows instructions to avoid using NVIDIA's H20 chips that were issued during the summer. The RTX Pro 6000D is the Blackwell-based chip designed specifically for the Chinese market to get around export controls and was to be the successor to the H20. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang said, We probably contributed more to the Chinese market than most companies have, and I'm disappointed with what I see. But they have larger agendas to work out between China and the United States. We can only be in service of a market if the country wants us to be. NVIDIA has guided market analysts to assume zero sales in China moving forward, but the ban still dashes hopes that NVIDIA would return to what was once their second largest market. Beijing reportedly believes that their homegrown chips are now sufficiently advanced that they can step in to replace the H20 and forthcoming RTX Pro 6000. Still, by all accounts, the infrastructure required for mass production is still being constructed. At the same time, the ban on NVIDIA products means that Chinese chipmakers will have a huge backlog of orders to validate the cost of expanding supply. Vaser and Ling, managing director at Union Private Bank, said, China clearly prefers to develop AI at its own pace on a domestic tech stack. Better to bite the bullet now than to rely on U.S. tech that can be restricted upon a whim. A complete ban, if true, would show China's confidence in its local supply chain somewhat. But it's still likely it's a bargaining chip in the trade negotiations. Speaking of chips, chipmaking startup Grok, completely unrelated, by the way, to XAI's chatbot, has raised a ton of cash in a gigantic new fundraising round. The company announced on Wednesday that they'd raised $750 million at a $6.9 billion valuation. Rumors from July had suggested the round would draw in $600 million at $6 billion, so this is meaningfully bigger than was previously expected. Grok last raised in August of last year at $2.8 billion, making this a 2.5x jump. Now, another oversubscribed AI venture round isn't all that newsworthy by itself, but Grok seeing a ton of demand does tell us something about competition in chipmaking. Grok designs chips that are purpose-built for AI inference, as opposed to NVIDIA's more general-purpose GPUs. Google is working along a similar path with their Trillium TPUs. In fact, Grok's founder, Jonathan Ross, worked on the TPU project at Google prior to starting his own company around the idea of efficient inference chips. While we're not there yet, the future of AI chipmaking could start to diverge substantially from where it's been. The market is beginning to fragment into different types of chips optimized for different parts of the AI stack. AI training will continue to benefit from the highest performance chips, which for the moment are still NVIDIA's range of GPUs, but inference, which represents a vastly larger portion of AI chip demand ultimately, increasingly looks like it could go to companies that can build the fastest or most energy efficient chips. Quick one for my enterprise users out there. AI avatars are about to be unleashed on Zoom meetings around the world. Zoom announced on Wednesday that the third generation of their AI avatars will be coming in December. This will be the first generation capable of appearing in live meetings rather than just delivering pre-recorded messages. The avatars won't be able to attend meetings by themselves. Instead, they will function as an overlay on live video tracking the user's movement. Zoom said that they are photorealistic and designed for moments that require a polished presence without needing the user to be camera ready, i.e. roll out of bed right before the meeting and still look great. A series of guardrails are being rolled out alongside the technology. Zoom says they can verify that the person sitting in front of the camera matches the AI avatar. They will also display clear warning signals that you're looking at an AI avatar rather than a real person. Already live deepfakes have become an issue in corporate security. So the optimistic take here would be that normalizing the use of avatars will raise awareness that you can't always believe what you see in front of you on the screen. Alongside the new avatar features, Zoom is also rolling out their built-in translation and AI note-taking functions. Lastly today, a quick discussion of Meta's new smart glasses. The company has released a pair of new smart glasses that they hope will become the native AI device of the next decade. The products were rolled out at Meta Connect on Wednesday and are called the Meta Ray-Ban Display. As you'll no doubt have guessed from that name, the big new feature is a display built into the glasses. It is a 600 by 600 pixel display projected onto the right lens of the glasses, making it basically invisible for anyone looking from the outside. The other big advance is the introduction of Meta's neural band controller. The device detects electrical signals given off by nerves in the wrist, allowing the glasses to be controlled by subtle hand movements. Now, a lot of the chatter about this was this feature breaking for Mark Zuckerberg while live on stage, and many people were ragging on Meta for the demo not working. Andreas Klinger had this right, though, when he wrote, Marketing people think this is bad, but this builds an insane pile of trust among engineers. You know the stuff in the show is real. You know they dare to actually ship, and they believe in their product enough to take the risk of something breaking live. I'd build for that ecosystem rather than some fancy After Effects vaporware marketing demo. And I could not agree more. A real live demo like this, even that has big problems and failures, is a thousand X more brand accretive, especially for early adopters and builders, than the sort of polished pre-recorded junk that we've more increasingly gotten from the big tech companies over the last few years. And look, people's first impressions are pretty positive. 
it seems like The Verge's reviewer even tried to dislike them and just couldn't get herself there. She posted, I regret to inform you, Meta's new smart glasses are the best I've ever tried. We are, of course, all still waiting on the device that Sam Altman and Johnny Ive are cooking up. But right now, when it comes to AI wearables, it is Meta's and Meta's alone. But that is going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode. <laughs> 